Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction, and we're diving back into the director who buys me dinner. We're diving into episode eight. We're almost done with the series. Um, if you saw my reaction to episode seven, I had some questions slash confusions about just the lore of um, Dong Beck's name and why he was without a name and why that mattered and like I, I, I had some questions um and i still think the series was very well done i just think that whatever they were referencing in my mind was like a cultural thing that they didn't necessarily explain so like if they were if you were a part of the korean culture you might have understood what they were referencing but us international fans might have just been like, I don't understand why this is such a big deal or how we break this. So I had some questions and I pose, I asked you guys, what, what do you guys think? And there are some of you who are on the same page as me like, no, they didn't explain it and I, I was confused too, but I just assumed it was something cultural. I'm like, okay, we on the same page. But then I did actually get a couple of really interesting um, explanations and I just want to share them. Um, first thing that I kind of spitballed in my head after I watched the episode is I was kind of thinking something along the lines, okay, he can't, he's a child of God, so he can't have, he's a shaman son, so he can't have a name because if he has a name, then that's gonna semi sort of like tether him to the the human world. Not that he's not, oh, I mean, he's human, um, but as a child of God, he wants to have some sort of i don't know maybe level of enlightenment or just doesn't want to be tied down to the human plane so once you give him that name that kind of ties him down whereas if you didn't give him the name he'd have a better chance of just remaining like i was spitballing things but i didn't really have all the details in order and some people were able to word things a little bit better so one explanation came from nahib which might be how pronounced i apologize if i mispronounced i probably did i'm sorry uh, but they said from what I understand, a child of God is supposed to be like a white sheet of paper. It is meant to live bound to the God and or create presence of said God on earth. It is believed that names can shape your destiny and determine your future. That means too strong of an involvement to human desires and mortal things, though. The child of God that was not supposed to have a destiny, a human linked to uh, the child... Okay, well, that was a terrible place to end the episode. I mean, it makes for a great cliffhanger, but I'm like, that's the one thing about this series and these shorter Korean series. Like, they, they just go by so fast. They go by so fast, and I'm just like, I'm just getting settled. I'm just getting in the groove of things. I'm like, okay, I think we still have like a little three, four more minutes left in the episode. You know, we're going to finish out the scene, blah, 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 and then just bam, ending comes. I'm like, ah, oh. man. So we got, you know, kind of a little recap of what we experienced last episode with the flashback scene. Um, and then we kind of came to present day where um, Dong Baek was just by his phone nonstop like, he should be back. He should be over there. He hasn't texted me yet. What's going on? Mm, what's going on? And then, you know, the other lady's like, hey, I need you to send me that report. It's like, ah, oh, shit, I, I only wrote half of it. So, you know, he stays up all night trying to finish the report, passes out, never saw him send the report, never saw him finish the report. So I know he says he finished his work once you damn came around, but I'm hoping that he did. We didn't see any repercussions of it, him not finishing the work happened in the episodes. I'm assuming he did. Um, but, you know, you damn came, covered him over with the jacket and he was just taking him in, just looking at him. Any Anyone who's been in love or just had like a real romantic attraction to another person knows that feeling that feeling of just looking at them when they're asleep when they're not when they're vulnerable basically when they're not trying to put on a show or they're not you know trying to be a character or anything like that they're just them in their most peaceful calm state and you just take in everything about them every freckle every eyelash every ingrown hair every little bit of a unibrow every 
you know, whatever it be, they take in every single part, you know, you just run your finger across and it's just like, you, you just take them in because it's like, it, to you, they are just like the most beautiful thing in the world. Um, and, you know, you may have seen them more, more all dolled up and glammed up or whatever in various different cases, but like in that moment, they are just the single most beautiful thing in the world to you and there's just nothing that compares to them. It, it was very much that moment. Um, and then, you know, Dong Baek woke up and they had, you know, pleasant conversation. And you could see that there was still a sense of s sadness slash concern in Udam um, with the way he was responding. Because Dong Baek's like, oh, have you, or Udam's like, um, I'm tired. We should, you know, it's, that's enough work for a night. Let's, you know, go home. And Dong Baek's like, have you eaten? Let's eat together. And Udam's like, well, you want to eat dinner now? It's late. Nowhere is open. And Dongbek's like, well, how about we eat at your place? And Udam's like, I don't have any food. And Dongbek's like, you've fallen for someone else, haven't you? And he's being all pouty and adorable. And I'm like, you guys, you guys are so damn cute. Um, but you could see this like worry looming over you damn's head because I don't know how long it's been since he's had to think about those memories of when he first met you know Dung Beck and you know gave him the name and all that stuff but being in that location where they were shooting the video last episode triggered like major flashbacks for him and he was very emotionally distraught by the end of the episode um so I don't know how long he's had since he's last thought about those instances but he, it was still weighing on him um in the beginning parts of this episode but Dung Beck being his adorable puppy self, weaseled his way into um, Udam's the rest of his evening. They went to his house, they brought all kinds of supplies, they set up a Christmas tree, they had just sweet little romantic stuff, they had a nice little talk. Um, Dong Baek went in for a kiss, and it was the sweetest little kiss, and they just had some more sweet shenanigans. Then the next day, Dong Baek is at work, you know, watching um, Dennis, um, still assisting. I thought the assisting was just for the one day, but I, I guess we're assisting him long term. Whatever. Um, but he's texting and, you know, he's like, I know I don't feel well. Um, but, you know, I'll hug you when you come back. I'm like, oh, yay. And, you know, he's giddy. He's giddy as a schoolgirl. He is cheesing from ear to ear. And Dennis comes out and he's like, who are you talking to? It's like, oh, I, did, I didn't realize you were here. Hey, let me show you to the stage. Um, and then Dennis flipped out. Um, but again, we heard that same high-pitched um, feedback sort of noise um, that we've heard when Dennis is about to go in and out of these fits of like passing out or whatever, um, which I've just associated with his past life coming back to do something whether it's like possessing him or influencing him in some way shape or form like that seems to be the sound that occurs when something in the past life is interfering with the present day um so past life dennis was like don't you turn your back on me ever again uh, blah 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 blah. I starts yelling at him and i'm like maybe Past life Dennis wasn't just a hired hitman from daddy. Maybe past life Dennis had some sort of um, attachment to someone and that's why he sh shot him or something. I don't know. I'm spitballing. I'm just reaching for things right now. But there's some past life Dennis was coming out for some reason. He's coming out to play for some reason. Um, and it's like, oh, shit. So then he ran off and Dong Baek went to take care of him and Dong Baek's like, oh, why, why are you taking 8,000 tranquilizers? Like, girl, how are you alive right now if this is the, your normal dose? Like, girl, because he was just like, like, it felt like a cartoon. Like, he kept shaking the box and more and more came out. And it's like, there can't possibly be that many pills in that little box. But somehow he just. So, um, Dong Beck was able to calm him down, help him breathe and focus, you know, focus on my voice and just breathe, calm down and, you know, got him through the moment. And then, you know, he was able to have a nice, good performance. It's all well and good. 
and then Dung Beck just looked like death. Like, I know we said earlier in the episode that he wasn't feeling well, and okay, cool, that's one thing, but like, the transition between, and I don't know how much time passed, obviously enough time for Dennis to do his live performance, um, I don't know how much time that was in their world, but I'm, I'm sure within a matter of hours, if you weren't feeling well before and you had to be on your feet working, 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 yeah, it'd probably make you feel even worse, um, but he, he looked like deaf. Um, even the other boss lady's like, "Hey, what's wrong with your face? Like, you look so pale." And he's like, "Oh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom." And then he just, boom, hits the ground, passes out. And I'm like, "Oh, baby, I don't, I don't know what brought this on. I don't know what, if Dennis, his presence infected him in some way, shape, or form in the hallway. If he passed something on to him. If it's completely unrelated to Dennis, and if it's just the curse settling in even more. If we're running out of time before the curse, you know, takes its effect on Dongbek. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Um, but I'm very interested to see what is going to happen next. So I'm going to watch the next episode and see what happens next. <laughs> So that's how this works um so i hope you guys enjoyed this reaction if you did don't forget to like comment subscribe share turn on notifications to be notified when all my shenanigans get posted if there's anything else you'd like me to react to be sure to leave it down in the comments i'll get to it as soon as i possibly can if you'd like to support the channel in other ways you're more than welcome to join us over on patreon you don't have to but you're more than welcome to if you want to and i'll see you guys in my next video love you And before you guys go, I want to give a huge thank you to everyone supporting me over on Patreon. This channel would not be what it is today without your continued support, and I can't begin to thank you guys enough for all you've done for me. If you'd like to join us over on Patreon, the link is down in the description. I'll see you guys in my next video.